Hello everyone, it's Mike here and welcome to one of the Royal Albert Hall's Discover Music and Maths videos. Uh, I'm a musician, this is the instrument I play, the tuba, uh, but I also absolutely love maths and science and I'm going to show you in these videos just some of the overlaps between the two, su the two subjects really. Um, in this video we're going to really focus on uh, fractions, decimals and percentages. Before we do that though, I just want to think a little bit about how we make music. How do people come up with new ideas? So, we all recognize, we'll all recognise this tune. Twinkle, twinkle, obviously. But let's just have a think about what the person that wrote that was thinking. So, some people think there's a, ma a magic, magic about writing music, but it's actually just a lot of decisions to make. So the person has gone, okay, I need a first note. Great, great choice that one, I think. It's so good, I'm gonna play it twice. And then they've gone, right, what are we gonna play next? All right, it's sounding pretty good so far. So we've got bum, 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 bum. Writing this down as they go, just to keep notes. Oh, don't like that one. And they're going through their piece and making new ideas as they go. And when they hear something that's nice, they go, okay, we'll keep it. When they don't like something, they get rid of it. And we can do that right now at home. Whether you happen to have a tuba at handy at home, if you do, you can go, right, I'm going to start on this note. Okay, I've got six of those. What shall I do now? next? Write it down. But you might not have a tuba at home, but you can use your hands and your body. Um, so I might go, right, I'm going to write a brand new piece. It might not be the best and most exciting piece, but it is a brand new piece. I've thought of that and thought of that pattern. Now what a lot of composers do is once they've got a, a plan, they start to write things down. And this is where it can be a bit confusing because a notation, musical notation is a bit tricky to read. And we're not gonna dive into that today. There's crotchets and quavers and minims and things like that. Um, but we're gonna do something a little bit different to make our lives easier. Um, so what I've done, is I've drawn us a grid and hopefully I'm going to bring this grid on so you can all see it now with a bit of help of, from technology and on this grid you can see there's eight empty boxes it goes one and two and three and four and so there's eight empty boxes now before we move on I need you to get a pen and paper out and I want you to draw that box that grid so you need a big long oblong halve it a few times and get eight empty boxes in it, okay? Um, while you're doing that, you can either pause the video or if you prefer, I can put you on hold and give you some uh, tuba playing hold music. Okay, welcome back. So hopefully you should all by now have a grid that looks like this one. We can use this to create rhythms if we give you some simple instructions. So what I'm going to say is every time you see an X in the grid, I want you to clap once. On this new slide, you can see I've put on four X's in the grid. So you would clap four times or once per X. Then there are also four gaps. And in those four gaps, you're going to say the word shh. So the rhythm here with four X's and then four gaps would sound like this. Shh, 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 shh. So that makes sense. So four X's is four claps, 
for gaps is for shushes. Can we try it at home as well? Ready? One, two, three, go. Shh, 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 shh. Okay, that's the right idea, I think. Um, and this is where we bump into a little bit of maths for the first time as well. Um, because in my grid, I've got eight gaps and I put four things into the boxes. So we, we can create a fraction. We can work out what fraction of my grid has got X's in it. Now, to get the answer, we need to know that there are eight boxes at the bottom. So we're going to put the eight at the bottom of the fraction. And then there are four X's, four boxes with X's in. So we're going to put four on the top of the fraction. So the numerator, which is the top half of the fraction, is a four. And the denominator is an eight, which is the bottom half of the fraction. Four over eight, or four eighths. There is also something called equivalent fractions. And if we worked out the equivalent fraction, we'd get one over two, or a half. Now, the other things we wanted to talk about today are percentages and decimals. Now, to write a half as a percentage, we need to realize that a percentage starts off with 100 things, and we only need half of that. So if you half 100, what do you get? You get 50. So the, to write a half as a percentage, you would write it as 50%. Then with the decimal, writing a decimal, the first column in the decimal section is called the tenths column. And if we had a whole, uh, all the boxes had X's in, it would be 10 out of 10 and we'd carry it over. But it's, we only have half of the boxes, so half of 10 is 5. So the decimal would write 0 0.5. This is what uh, my worksheet would look like now. So we've got four eighths equals one half, a percentage of 50% and a decimal of 0.5. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so I've changed the slide now and changed the rhythm. So uh, we're gonna try and clap this pattern. So now we've only got two X's, and we've got six shushes. So we're gonna do, try and do it all together, ready? One, two, three, go. That's our new rhythm. And we're gonna quickly jump straight into the fraction here. So what is the fraction of my grid that has got X's in it? To work this out, we need to realize there are two X's. So the two goes on the numerator, the top of the fraction, and it's out of a total of eight boxes. So the eight goes on the bottom. There is also an equivalent fraction here as well. So if we half the top number and half the bottom number, we end up with one over four or a quarter. So that's the equivalent fraction. Now, remember the percentage, to work out the percentage, we need to take a hundred things and we only need a quarter of them. So what's a hundred divided by four? A quarter of a hundred. Now, I just want to show you, uh, I'm going to put up the next slide now um, so you can see the answers here. So we've got the two X's uh, and then we've got the two over eight, which equals one over four. And we've also got a percentage of 25%. But also notice that the decimal equals 0 0.25. Now this is a really neat little thing to spot, is that the, the 25 and the 2.25, the numbers are always the same in a percentage as they are in a decimal. They're just shifted across by a factor of two. So it's like dividing by 100 or multiplying by 100. So those numbers are always the same. If it says, so for, as an example, if it was 17%, the decimal would be 0.17. I hope that makes sense. It's a really neat, neat little trick that you're going to use a lot for, uh, in the future. Okay, here's a third rhythm for us to try now. Um, this on paper looks pretty straightforward, doesn't it? It's just got one X on it. Let's try and clap it. One, two, three, go. Shh, 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 shh. Really straightforward, that rhythm, isn't it? Um, and actually, the fraction's pretty easy as well. There's 1x, so that goes on the top of the fraction, and then it's out of 8 again, so it's 1 over 8, or 1 eighth. We run into a bit of bother, though, when we try, we try and work out the percentage, because 100 divided by 8 is actually quite a tricky sum to do. Some of you might be able to do it. Have a little think before I tell you the answer. Um, but there's also a stepping stone, which is why I love maths so much. Um, from the last rhythm, we had 2 eighths, and that equaled 25%, and we only want one, one eighth. 
So if we half 25, we'll get an answer. And the answer is actually 12.5%. And then the decimal, remember our new rule where you just slide all the numbers across a little bit, uh, or two places rather, uh, the decimal becomes 0 0.125. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so it's just about uh, your turn to do some work now. Um, just a little uh, heads up and a little bit of a warning. Some of the rhythms will have awkward fractions. So for example, three, if you, three out of eight, three eighths, can be quite tricky to work out as a percentage. Uh, but as long as you're good at your 12.5 times table, you should be all right. Three times 12.5 is the answer. Uh, you can also do it by kind of cleverly add, adding up a, a 25 and a 12.5, or, or there's, there's ways around it. But I want you to spend time trying to get really accurate with these uh, quite complicated sums. Um, obviously use a calculator if you're really, really struggling or if you just wanna check your answers. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to really discover lots of different rhythms. You'll, you'll find that some rhythms that you write into your grid sounds really groovy and cool. Some rhythms sound really boring and some rhythms are really hard and some rhythms are really easy. As you're going through, I want you to really explore these patterns. Every time you've done a rhythm, get used to clapping it, and then I want you to um, do all the maths associated with that. So get the fraction done, get the percentage done, and the decimal, and then once you're done, rub it all out. So it's probably useful using a pencil at this point rather than just wasting loads of paper with lots and lots of pen workings. Um, I want you to put me on hold for a minute again, so you can either listen to my tuba playing, probably not advisable, or you can just press pause on the video. Um, and while you're doing this, just spend a bit of time really, really um, exploring all this maths and all this uh, music as well. All right, see you in a bit. now have your two favourite rhythms and hopefully you've done the maths as well alongside those two favourite rhythms and what we're going to do now is we're going to put a little piece of music together. You can either clap those patterns or if you wanted to go and find yourself a really cool instrument to play uh, from, from inside your house somewhere. You might have a tuba lying around or a more likely a, maybe a guitar or a, a, a drum or um, a tambourine or a shaker or even go to, into the kitchen and find a wooden stick and a, a mop bucket even. That makes a really good sound. Uh, whatever you can, you can find will work really well. In our little piece, we're going to put a little drum machine on and I'm going to play for four bars and then I want you to play your favourite rhythm four times. Then I'll play again and then I want you to play your other favourite rhythm four times and that'll be our piece. So let's see what it sounds like. One and two and three. All right, it sounded pretty good to me from my end. Hope it sounded good from your end as well. Why don't you do that whole exercise again? Um, and this time, why don't you film yourselves as well? Um, we'd love to, for you to send in a little recording of you doing uh, this mathematical fractions piece of music so we can see what really interesting instruments you've chosen to play along with, all that kind of thing. Um, so please do um, rewind the video a little bit and then send us um, what, you've, what you've managed to achieve. It'd be really cool for us to hear um, some of your music. There are actually gonna be loads of videos up on the Royal Albert Hall website for you to explore. And there's already quite a few up there anyway. So I really do hope you enjoy having a look around uh, and 
enjoying some really great musical opportunities. Uh, for me though, it's bye for now.